This is real life. God loves you. Jesus died for you. The Holy Spirit, He empowers you. And the Bible is your and my guide to abundant life. I'm your host, Don Black. The pastors are in our house for hard questions today. That's on Real Life. We're so glad you're here to join us for Real Life, where we talk about the abundant life that Jesus provides to his people, to his children. We're so glad you tuned in, and I'm so glad to introduce you to my wife, Terry. Hello, welcome. Happy Thursday. <laughs> Happy Yay. Thursday, indeed. And it's the end of June already. Goodness yeah. gracious. June has left the house. Wow, you know, when I was a young girl, and I would be like, oh, my day's going forever. I thought, you know, I thought time was very slow. And then as I got older, it's gotten shorter and shorter and shorter. But I now think it's any age. I just think time has just sort of come really at a quick speed. Don't you think? Time goes quickly. In, in most cases, I agree with you. Then there's those times that it, you go, well, when is this ever going to be over with? Oh. <laughs> you know, when you're going through a trial or a situation that you want to be over, it seems right. like it slows down and you have to... Just be patient. Boy, that's the word for today is patience. Mm. How can we learn to be patient and wait on the Lord? Well, you know, sometimes they say when you ask for patience, that's when God puts all kinds of challenges in your life to teach you patience. Yeah. So I guess you really need to, if you're going to pray for patience, really be prepared for some uh, enduring kind of battles in your life. You're going to overcome them, but you're going to have them. Well, long suffering is the fruit of the Spirit. Yeah. Never understood that, guys. Now, listen to me. I'm not talking to the pastors. Maybe that's a good hard question. Mm -hmm. Why would God make one of the fruit of the Spirit long suffering? Why would make suffering a fruit of the Spirit long suffering even that? Because this life is going to have tribulation. Jesus mm -hmm. told us, but be of good cheer. Remember what he said? Yes, because he has overcome the world. Amen. And we are. Mm -hmm. overcomers in him. You know, so I'm going to remind you of, uh, of something that's coming up in the very near future. We have created, under the inspiration of God, a program, a special called In God We Trust that celebrates the 60th anniversary of In God We Trust being our national motto. And on July 30th, I want you to mark your calendars and you want to watch this special two hours mm -hmm. because we go into the In God We Trust. We've asked our program partners men like Pat Robertson, women like Joyce Meyer, mm -hmm. and many others to tell us about how God is hands on our nation and what we need to do as Christian citizens to see him turn away from right. the direction that we've been going in. So I want to tune in for that and pray for us. That's right. As this program gets finalized, as all the pieces get put together, mm -hmm. as the distribution gets put together, we, our goal is 100 million people can see this special. So it's got to get outside of our network, and I know the Lord has opened the doors already. So anyway, keep that in prayer, but watch for the 30th of July and be part of that very special program. We take, uh, speaking of special programs, we take tours, and Terry is the cruise director. <laughs> She's the Julia of Love of, Boat. I Remember know, Love Boat? Love Boat. Love Boat. And she's, mm -hmm. the, she's the cruise director. Okay. Oh, wait. If you say that, maybe all these single people will come on and they'll think that I can match them up. Well, that's a whole different story. Oh, topic. yes. This the, is just a fun and inspiration trip. And we had one in Gettysburg. Yeah, we did. Mm -hmm. we, saw God's, we saw God's hand. We went to to find the God story in the Battle mm -hmm. of Gettysburg. And we've got a little clip. There's a half hour special coming up in July, and you want to watch you for this special, but we got a little clip for you to see about Joshua Lawrence Chamberlain. Let's watch that now. The Alabamans had already marched 20 miles that day and had been unable to find water to refill their canteens. With nothing left to lose, Chamberlain ordered a bayonet charge down the hill. It was imperative to strike before we were struck by this overwhelming force in a hand-to-hand -hand fight. At that crisis, I ordered the bayonet. By all accounts, the, the, the men already figured out what they were gonna do. So the order was not really an order order. 
But when he ordered up the charge, everybody lined up, they all charged down the hill. And their momentum running into the Confederates, they were spent, they, most of them gave up or turned around and ran back out of the way. So he saves the day. This charge was successful beyond all my hopes. We took twice as many prisoners as we had men in our ranks. The result of this movement, beyond question, was the saving of Round Top itself. Bring you back memories of us being there. One, That's awesome. Yeah, it is it fantastic. It is really wonderful. It's an hour, not a half hour, and it mm -hmm. is on July the 2nd. So we want you to tune in and watch at 7 p.m. in For God and Country, Honor and Country. And we're going to show it again on the 3rd of July. So it's a great 4th of July type of a weekend thing for you to watch. That's when the battle actually was fought. Let's go to the Word. I always want to put the Word in the front part of this program today. Let's read from Psalms, the 33rd chapter, the 6th verse. And it says this, By the Word of the Lord the heavens were made, and all the host of them by the breath of His mouth. God literally spoke everything into existence. He made the planets, the stars, the entire universe just with His Word. He also created everything that lives, both the plants, the animals, everything that's on this, on this earth he created with the, his mouth, with words. What he didn't speak into existence was man, was Adam. He actually used his hands. He got down into the dirt and formed Adam out of his image in the dirt. You know, that shows you how much he loves man, his creation, and how we are his special workmanship. Terry, God could have spoke us into existence. Let there be man. Mm -hmm. But he didn't. He made us in his image and he breathed life into us. That's amazing. And you know, we're supposed to reflect him That's in right. our lives too. So not only did he create us, but he predestined us to, to be like him. Well, I want you to be blessed, feel blessed, your special creation. Mm -hmm. We're going to come right back with the pastors and a very difficult, hard question. Hey, Cornerstone family, great news. Now you can access all your favorite Cornerstone moments right from your iPhone or iPad. Once you download the brand new Cornerstone television app, you can watch our live programming on demand, including special original shows and movies. You can also use the app to call for prayer. At CTVN, you are our family. And now, thanks to the Cornerstone television app, we're just a click away. And the Lord, He is the one who goes before you. He will be with you. He will not leave you nor forsake you. Do not fear or be dismayed. Deuteronomy 31.8. Well, here we are at the Hard Questions panel where pastors come together and tackle the issues of day right out of the Bible. On Hard Questions today, my regular right hand, the strong <laughs> right arm, is Dr. William Glaze from Bethany Baptist in Pittsburgh. Amen. Strong right, second, second, <laughs> playing second base. <laughs> twins. <laughs> twins. <laughs> twins. Identical. Pastor Pete Giacalone from Rainbow Temple in McKeesport. On the far left, <laughs> Not literally. <laughs> you look offended by it, brother. Chris Gibbs. Well, he never said he strong. Wrong. You said strong for the first strong two. Strong left is Pastor go. Chris Gibbs from <laughs> Crossways Church in Valencia. And our new a pitch hitter, actually. I'm, I'm in the baseball. Pirates are playing. Pastor Tim Bergen from Christian Center Church in Abel. Uh, Vernon. We're glad to have you, brother. I'm glad to be here. I'm sure a lot of our family are glad to see your face. Well, I, I'm, I'm glad to see their faces. See, that's part of what they don't know is that we've watched them from this side. So. What would it be like if that was really true? I think it'd be <laughs> it's gonna happen. frightening to all. But let's not even go there. This is a short edition of Hard Questions. I do want to tell you that we do this program on a half hour basis. Mm -hmm. So find us, tune us in, and watch us on a half hour. Then we let 
these men loose. <laughs> they were able to go deeper into the into the truth. But today we're gonna we're gonna tackle a hard question, guys. Uh, Bianca, how does that say that? Bianca from El Paso, Texas, says, "Well, why did Satan be allowed to be in the Garden of Eden with Adam and Eve?" Can I jump in there? Yeah, man. I haven't. I've been very good. Yeah, <laughs> I really you have, have been patient, haven't I? Yeah. Are you proud of me, Doc? Yeah, I'm very okay. proud of you. I'll speak real fast. I called a, 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 a rabbi on this to, to, to go back to the Hebrew, and, uh, and we talked, a good friend of mine by the name of Bob Kuzma, and I said, Bob, what do you think? And, and uh, as we were talking about this particular situation, Bob was sharing with me that what, when God told Adam, you're to be the keeper, the Hebrew word there for keeper actually means guard. So uh, it wasn't so much that God placed Satan or Lucifer in the garden. He wandered into the garden, and in all actuality, Adam wasn't doing his job because if he would have done his job, if he would have kept the garden guarded. Hmm. That's that word keeper, means to keep it guarded. Interesting. Think well, about that. Well, you know, and, I, and I'll uh, take that a step further. And, and, you know, God made us as free moral agents. And... God wants us to love him from our heart. He could have made us robots yeah, yeah. Right. and made us love him. Mm -hmm. And I believe that one reason that and Satan wandered, he let, allowed Satan to wander That's into it. the garden mm -hmm. was to give them that choice That's to it. whether they were going to follow God, love God with their whole heart, or disobey him. And, and I think that it's, it, by Satan being there, it allowed them to show where their heart was. And, and then, well, we got to come over, right, to, yeah, we yeah, come yeah. over to the power left. <laughs> <laughs> uh, free, free will can only be proven by given an opportunity to choose the opposite. Absolutely. And so what, what you have here too is it's not, again, it's not that God placed him there, but God allowed him there. Mm -hmm. If you will look there, even in, in, in Isaiah uh, 14, 12 to 15, where it talks about Lucifer, uh, five different times uh, he says, I will ascend to the heavens. I will raise my throne. I will sit in throne. I will ascend above. I will make myself like the most high. And so what what's happening in the garden is God has given an opportunity to Adam, okay, to, to, to do what uh, Satan didn't do, to, to choose him. But because right. if you'll notice what Satan gave, told Eve is, hey, you will be like God. You will be like mm -hmm. this. Mm -hmm. And so they, because we all in humanity, we want to know more. And what God is saying, if you will just trust me, and he gives me opportunities every day to choose whether I'm going to trust him or I'm going to choose my own mm -hmm. understanding. Real, real love requires choice. Yeah. I mean, that's yeah. the bottom line. That's right. um, it is a matter of when we're talking about receiving and giving love requires choice. And without the opportunity of choice, there is no love. You wouldn't want it's Terry it. to love you because she's some kind of, as Bill was saying, some kind of robot saying, oh, yeah. I love Don, I love Don, <laughs> I love Don. No, it requires choice. And, and Adam and Eve were given some very distinctive commandments. They were given, listen, take care of the garden be the right, gatekeeper yeah. of the garden. And, and they, were, they were told, listen, uh, you know, don't touch the, the tree. And they were given that knowledge, given that choice, so yeah. that they could make the choice to say, God, I really love you and I trust you. Mm, and they true. failed in that, in that choice. So that's without true. that choice, there would be no opportunity to love. Mm, that, right. That's good, that's real good. Well, what, why the serpent was not just a snake? No. Not, no, at all. not at that time. Sometimes it gets confused. Right. It right. was a snake. Right. It was a snake, and I, I, Lucifer took, the, I guess, the position of a snake. But why a snake, guys? What? What? Why is that the, uh, as if you could answer, why do you think a snake? Well, you know what? I, I think that before that happened, I, I, this is my opinion, I, I believe that the, the serpent, the snake, whatever you want to call it, was a respected creature. Mm -hmm. And then a, after that, you know, when uh, Satan went into him, you know, I believe that that's, what, that's when we started looking negatively, you know, at the snake and at the serpent. But I think before that, it was, a, a, you know, just like any other creature. Yeah, it probably moved upright and, and until it was cursed. And said, uh, you should dwell on your belly. To yeah, but the thing too, uh, Genesis 3, 1, it says, Now the serpent was more crafty mm -hmm. than any other beast of the field that God, that the Lord God had made. Mm -hmm. So there was a certain uh, superiority. There, there was a certain uh, craftiness and speciality of this thing. Satan always knows what to infiltrate in order mm -hmm. to try to get mm -hmm. into, uh, in, in between where you are and where God wants you to be. He will use that. They recognize that. Mm -hmm. 
That's good. The That's thing good. we never talk about with this story that, that kind of drives me crazy is how often did the animals talk to them? Yeah. I mean, seriously. Yeah. Yeah. I, I mean, this, yeah. this snake, and they're acting like, oh, yeah, I guess the snake's talking to me. Yeah. And, I guess, and I guess it's an okay point. And it, but it is something that we need to look at as Christians from the standpoint of all kinds of voices mm. talk to us That's on right. a daily basis. And we need to realize that unless we are full of the Word of God, this section you talk about in the beginning of the show that we're empowered by the Holy Spirit, unless we have those things, it is easy for us to be deceived along any of these lines and to believe the lies. Mm -hmm. See, the thing about the lies that Satan said too, where they weren't things that God actually said. He said, will you, you know, as surely, yeah. Well, and it's like, no, God never right. said, if I touch it, I'm gonna die. And Jesus modeled said, the same right. thing in the wilderness on the mountain. When he was led there by the spirit, mm -hmm. Satan came and tempted and Jesus right. threw the word right, right back at him. That's right, that's exactly right. And I, and I guess in closing, Pastor, when the temptation comes, mm -hmm. what's, what's our resistance? Well, the, re the resistance is to uh, flee temptation. Flee. You know, uh, it, it, when, when Satan comes out, I like, it, it talks about Job. It said that Job was a man that loved God Amen. and eschewed Amen. evil. Amen. And that word eschewed mean he avoided it. Amen. So, uh, you know, you got to avoid it when temptation comes. So stay out of, stay out of those dangerous places. Right. right. And then when the, when the enemy comes at you and he comes at you, and I'll tell you a place he's coming at somebody right now, I, the Spirit of God's showing me that somebody's fallen into, one of you are falling into this trap of pornography on mm. the internet. Wow. Mm. And I don't know if you're ministry or if you're not ministry, but you're being sucked into this trap mm. and the enemy has got you there. And it's just like, just like the, the devil did. Mm -hmm. He's making these promises to you, false promises that are not going to be fulfilled with that pornography. Pornography. You can be delivered from that. Amen. Stand Amen. against that. Pray with us. We'll call and stand with you for deliverance against it because you just need to be wise mm -hmm. and flee. Mm -hmm. I mean, that might mean you need to take your internet away from your, your house That's for a while. It. You might need to do that. Sure. Get serious about it because it's, it's, it's like a cancer. Mm -hmm. Hey, want to hear your, your, your questions? Thank you for sending that one to us. It's a great question. Send it to hardquestions at ctvn.org. Gentlemen, thank mm -hmm. you for coming. Amen. Tim, hope you'll come back. Here. Guys, All right. as well, always. We see you in September. I'll see you in September. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I don't know what that means. We'll be right back. <laughs> On average, Cornerstone receives over 300 phone calls a day, 24-7. But have you ever wondered what happens to your prayer request after you hang up the phone? On Real Life, we pray for every call, whether it's mentioned on air or not, and we even pray for them during our weekly chapel. Then we lay hands on your request and anoint it with oil, believing for your miracle. As Jesus tells us in Matthew 18, 20, for where two or three are gathered in my name, I am there in the midst of them. If you need prayer at any time, call us. We would love to pray with you. Need healing, a touch from the Lord, or encouragement? We've got a prescription from the great physician just for you. Faith Rx, Cornerstone's special CD of spiritual encouragement and prayer from Don Black and Gary Mitrick. Call today with your monthly gift to the ministry to receive this special CD. Play it in your car or home or share it with friends and trust God in your healing today through Faith Rx. You know, Terry, we're so thankful for our partners. I just saw that about the CD. Yes. And uh -huh. the scripture CD. If we didn't have you as a partner, if you didn't help us take the ministry out, we'd be limited on what we can do. There are people all over the country, and you help us by being part of this family. So, That's right. Terry, I just want to say thank you. Yes, Thank you. and I, we just appreciate you, and we pray for you. Yes, we so do. we know, just to let you know, our prayers for our ear, regardless of your financial support, but we literally pray for you daily, 24 hours a day. We have people praying for your particular need. I'll tell you, and we're going to see this on video, and I'm going to get into our interview because it's a very really important interview. But when Terry and I were in Israel, I took a, some technology, a little microfish that had the name of all of our partners on it. And when I went to the Wailing Wall, we took it and prayed and asked for God's touch on your life and then put it inside the well, into the Wailing Wall. You'll see that on an on a upcoming program that we are creating about mm -hmm. the trip. But that's how important that you are to us. Absolutely. We want to see your life turn into the, what God has for you. You know, when, when she was a young girl, Ilanka Deaton won a national singing competition in South Africa. This launched her career as a music artist, but it also trapped her in a life of slavery. 
She shares in her story, her book, Keeping Secrets. Ilanka, welcome to Real Life. Thank, Thank you so much for having me again. Yes. It's such a wonderful pleasure to be back with you. I know you've been with us before, and you have yes. such a beautiful singing voice. Oh, thank and you. And you're going to be singing on this program. Yes, I will. So I can't wait to hear you sing. Oh, but before we get to that part, and let's talk about your testimony, because I'm not, I didn't know yes. about this. Is this a new book? Yes, brand new, brand new book. Well, tell us, tell us the story. Well, my heart, first of all, is to encourage other women with difficult stories, not mm -hmm. just women, women and men with difficult stories, that their stories matter, and that no matter what you've gone through in your life, uh, God can, number one, use your testimony uh, to glorify himself and actually to help others out of darkness. Mm -hmm. And so that's mainly what the book is about. But my story um, is a very hard one. It's a difficult one. It's one that I've come to learn to, to appreciate and to celebrate, seeing what God can do through my story. But after I won this national singing competition in South Africa, um, a manager entered into my life, a music manager. And who how became old were you first? 12. I was 12, 12 years old. When you old. won, it's sort of like the it's like an American, American Idol. Idol. Yes. Right. Okay. So I was 12 years old and this music manager entered into my life. Now, this wouldn't have been a big deal if my actual dad was present in my life and he was not. Okay. So I never really knew what it was like to have a dad, to have that father figure mm -hmm. present in your life. Mm -hmm. And this music manager stepped into that role. And I really learned to trust him very quickly. I liked what it felt like to ha have male leadership. And I thought I could really trust him. But I did not know that he had something else in mm. store for my life. About a year into that contract, um, he sexually violated me the first time. And right after he did it, he um, threatened my life. Oh my and gosh. said that he would not only kill me, but he would kill my mother. Oh my and I, that really scared me to death because my mom was the only family yes. that I had. And I didn't want anything to happen to my mother. Absolutely. So I secretly made a vow with myself to believe him, number one, and then to trap myself in the secret of what he did mm. to me. I hoped that it would only be the one time, but unfortunately it was not. He continued that for five years. Five years? For five years. That's amazing what a vow does, you know, yeah. where you made a promise secret. to yourself, mm -hmm. that secret, and you kept that even though it was destroying you. Yes, because I felt I needed to protect my family and to protect my own life. Mm -hmm. What he ended up doing, I never could have imagined that any one person could be this evil. Um, it went all the way from him selling me to CEOs at big casino companies, oh my you know, gosh. for exchanges for finances, and then just continuing to keep me under his thumb. And when you live in such a dark secret for such a long time, you lose your identity yes. completely. Mm. The only thing that you can do is to pretend to be someone that you're not, because why would the world like someone who is engaged in trafficking and sex oh trafficking? Gosh and does sexual favors for men, you don't think anybody would understand your story. So you were sort of isolated in a way if, from, you know, because w your mother didn't know and, and you must have been so busy with your career, you could not have friends or out extended family. Correct. And, and the more I would give in to his demands, the more money I would make as an artist. The bigger shows I would get on. So there was always an exchange and having a mom that was a single mother with three kids, I felt very responsible, and not that she made me feel responsible. Right. I just felt a responsibility. Uh, Mom did know that there was something tremendously wrong with me. She took me from psychiatrist to psychiatrist to bringing pastors and youth pastors in to come and sit with me. CPS was called in into my school to sit down and talk to me. Wow. I just could not utter what was going on with me. Oh How gosh. did that stop? At 17 years old, I buy an undercover police officer saw him physically assaulting me. So an undercover policeman who was, I guess, investigating? No, he was not investigating. I was actually standing in a casino um, about to go on stage and he once again wanted sexual favor from me. And that day I had just reached the end of myself and just said, I don't care if he kills me today, I'm, I'm not going to give in. And we got into a physical altercation. And this undercover cop was, um, um, being security f for the casino that evening and he happened to walk into the dressing room to come and check in on me because they were ready for me to start my performance oh, and he just walked in i think the lord just used him mm -hmm. in that moment he pulled us apart he wanted to know what had happened but again i couldn't say what had happened 
uh, Mike's manager fled the scene. They chased after him. Um, he fled the property, and that was the last time I've ever seen him. You so never saw him that, again? No. <gasps> so, he, because he, he knew, to... though, if, if, if I had uttered anything, he would have been arrested immediately. So, so you didn't tell When did you tell? When was the first time you told the secret? I was 26 years old. <gasps> 26. So he was never arrested? or? No, now he has been. Oh, OK. Because we've pressed you charges since then. with other then. people, too? Or... Yes, multiple other young oh. Um, female oh, artists. Evil oh my gosh, evil. evil. Right. And then your story doesn't end there. You, right. The undercover policeman turned mm -hmm. out you dated him and he was abusive. Is yes, that right? Yes, he was. <gasps> oh but, my gosh. Which, you know, when, you, when, <laughs> when you've been around abusive men in your life, that's what you attract. Yes, if yeah. you've had no godly experience of what a godly example of a father looks like or a man looks like, how are you supposed to pick a godly man? Yeah. My dad wasn't in my life. I had no example of that. So when you've been abused in your life, you attract abusers, unfortunately. Yeah. Well, Ilaka, you're going to stay yes. on to the next. We're going to hear you sing in just a few minutes. Yes. But before we go to that, there are people watching, maybe men and women, that have this secret. Right. You know, it's that secret. It's locked in their heart and it's killing them. Right. What do you say to that person? Could you, could you tell them why they need to deal with that now? Yes. If you are someone that um, has been holding on to a secret as long as I have, or maybe even longer in your life, and you think that you're, no one's going to understand you, or no one will believe you, or no one will think that you're good enough, I want to tell you that it's a lie from the enemy that he's telling you. It's not the truth. Your story is actually very beautiful. 2 Corinthians 1.4 says, God comforts us through our troubles so that we can therefore go forward and comfort other peoples with the same comfort he's given to us. And that means that your story can be used to help someone else and you can get freedom from this horrible tyranny that you are living Amen. in every single day. Amen. And that freedom can happen right now. Amen. Amen. You can start on this path to freedom right now. Call the number on the screen and let's, let's stand together. One of our prayer partners, stand together with you in confidentiality, total confidentiality. We're, if you don't want to share your name with us, that's even okay too. If you don't want us to share your name on the air, that's okay. But why don't you take a step right now Absolutely. in faith to be free from the bondage of, mm -hmm. of, of that secret? That's right. You're forgiven. Oh, God's a you. deliverer. Mm -hmm. Call the number that's on the screen and let's stand together. We're going to have her, her back and, we, and you get to show you how to get a copy of the book. Go to our website. You can find out how to get a copy of this book. Mm -hmm. It's a story that's going to be life changing. Absolutely. So we'll come back for Good News 360. You're going to hear her sing and minister in the gift that God has given her. That's, see, I said it all started with the gift and the devil tried to steal the gift. We have good news about what God's doing in a, speaking of gifts, in a barbershop, local <laughs> barbershop that uh, I, I walked into by accident. It was crazy. But you're going to be blessed by this story about the barbershop. We love you. Mm -hmm. Real life is based upon you are called by God to walk in victory. This breaking this secret today is the first step towards abundant life in your life. God bless you.